Hello everyone, welcome to TX Academy. Hope you guys are fine. Uh, so today we are going to learn about a very important concept in microeconomics, that is elasticity of demand. Uh, before we begin, I want to mention that uh, we have already uploaded detailed lectures on demand, supply, and market equilibrium in our microeconomics playlist on this channel. So uh, I recommend you watch those videos first so that you can understand this topic on elasticity of demand more easily. Uh, so let's let's start with the first one. This basically elasticity of demand uh, is essential because it explains how consumers react when prices, income, or the price of related goods change. So by the end of this lecture, you will have a complete understanding of different types of elasticity, their formulas, and their practical importance in economics and business as well. So we'll start with the first slide that is meaning of elasticity. So let's begin with the meaning of elasticity of demand. Simply measure It simply measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to the changes in price, income, or the price of other goods. If demand changes a lot, when prices changes, it is called elastic demand. If demand hardly changes when prices changes, it is called inelastic demand. So elasticity tells us how sensitive consumers are to changes in economic conditions. So what are the types of uh, elasticity of demand? So let's discuss. There are mainly three types of demand elasticity. First, price elasticity of demand, which measures the effect of price changes. Second one is income elasticity of demand, which measures the effect of changes in income. Third one is Cross elasticity of demand, which measures the effect of changes in the price of related goods. So we will discuss each of these in detail with examples. So start with the first, that is price elasticity of demand. We can also say PED in short. So the most common type is price elasticity of demand or PED. This the formula of price elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded due to percentage change in price. This means we compare the percentage change in quantity demanded with the percentage change in price. So if the value is high, means demand is very responsive to price. And if the value is low, means demand is not very responsive. So let's discuss further the types of price elasticity of demand. The types of, there are five types of cases, like five main cases of price elasticity. The first one is elastic demand when PED is greater than one. A small change in price leads to a higher or larger change in demand. Example, luxury goods or airline tickets. Inelastic demand means demand changes less compared to price changes. For example, salt or basic knowledge. Management. Third is unitary elastic demand, where price elasticity of demand equals to 1 means percentage change in demand is exactly equal to the percentage change in price. Now, fourth one is perfectly elastic demand, where perfectly elastic demand means PED is equals to infinity, means even a tiny increase in price makes demand fall to 0. This happens in a perfect com competitive market, mostly in theory. So, uh, the fifth one is perfectly inelastic demand, where per price elasticity of demand equals to zero. Here, demand does not change at all, no matter what happens to price. For example, life-saving drugs like insulin. So there are five types of price elasticity of demand. Uh, these five types are very important to understand because they show different consumer reaction to price change. So let's discuss the examples of price elasticity of demand in real life. Let's see some real life example. First is luxury goods like jewelry or branded fashion are highly elastic because if price rises, people can easily stop buying. Second, necessity. Like food staples are inelastic because people need them anyway. Third, salt or medicine are mostly almost perfectly inelastic since people cannot live without them. 
Products like airline tickets or luxury travels are usually elastic because consumer can postpone or avoid them when price increases. So these examples make elasticity easier to connect with real world situations. Now, second type of elasticity of demand is income elasticity of demand. That is Y E D. So the formula is percentage change in quantity demanded due to percentage change in income. This tells us how demand changes when people's income changes. Means if Y E D is positive, it means the good is normal good. Normal good means where demand rises as income rises. Second, if YED is negative, that is inferior goods. Means inferior goods are those goods, means when demand, when income rises, the demand falls, like cheap alternative. And if YED is greater than one, it is a luxury good. Luxury good is where demand grows faster than income. And the last, Y E D is less than one. It is necessity where demand increases slowly with income. So income elasticity helps us to understand the relationship between income levels and consumer choices. So the last or the third type of elasticity of demand is cross elasticity of demand. That is X E D. The formula is Percentage change in quantity demanded due to percentage change. Percentage change in quantity of good A due to percentage change in price of good. Here the formula is a little bit different from uh, income or price elasticity of demand. Here we have two goods. So the formula is something like percentage change in quantity demanded of good A due to percentage change in price of good B. This shows how the demand for one product reacts to the price of another product. If XED is positive, the goods are substitutes goods. Like Coke and Pepsi or tea or and coffee. If Coke price goes up, people buy more Pepsi. So Pepsi and Coke are basically substitutes. If XED is negative, the goods are complements like cars and petrol and Tea and sugar means if the price of car rises, petrol demand falls. So this type of elasticity helps businesses and governments understand the relationship between different products. Now let's discuss the importance of elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand is not just a theory, it is very practical. Like business pricing decisions, where companies use elasticity to decide whether to increase or decrease prices. Government tax policy. Governments place higher taxes on inelastic goods like fuel and tobacco because demand does not fall much. International trade. Where countries set export and import policies by studying elasticity. Welfare and income distribution. Policymakers use elasticity to understand the impact of economic policies on people. Consumer behavior. Elasticity helps explain why consumers buy more or less when economic conditions change. So in short, elasticity is an important tool for both businesses and government. If we summarize the whole topic, so it's something like that. Elasticity means responsiveness of demand. We studied three types, price elasticity, income elasticity, and cross elasticity. Price elasticity have five special cases, elastic, inelastic, unitary, perfectly elastic, and perfectly inelastic. Elasticity is very useful in business decisions, taxation, trade, and understanding consumer behavior. So elasticity of demand is not only a key concept in economics, but also very important in real life. So thank you for uh, watching this lecture from TH Academy. I hope you know, have a clear understanding of elasticity of demand. If you found this lecture helpful 
and useful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to TS Academy for more economic lessons. See you in the next lecture. Take care. Bye-bye.